Welcome back to Echo Ridge, where things have gone from bad to worse here on our mini base playthrough. I'm not saying we're at full on dumpster fire status yet, but we're at least at Echo pouring gasoline over a trash fire. At the minimum. It all started when we started running out of coal. Not a big deal, we knew we were eventually going to run out of coal because we were using more power through the coal generators than the amount of coal that the sage hatch could produce. And the reason why that's happening is because this thermo aqua tuner has been running on average about 98% per cycle. But we needed to get the base to cool down. We need the mealwoods to come back to life, which they slowly are. Even our original Dreco ranch is coming back online. I just needed to keep providing cooling, and I knew once it was stable, after the thermo aqua tuner did its job, we'd be using less power. But still, patience does not become me. And I was like, well, let me just put in a temporary petroleum generator. No big deal. It'll be fine. Oh, it's fine, all right. Our bad boy solo petroleum generator is providing two kilowatts worth of power and keeping our base going nicely. What's even better is because we're using the petroleum, we're creating more natural gas out of the oil well, which means the natural gas generator can run as well. We have the natural gas generator set on 9070 and then the petroleum generator set on 9060. Unfortunately, running open air petroleum generators is never a good idea. We now have a small carbon dioxide problem. Just a little bit. Additionally, despite the fact that we are running a cooling line here, you can see that this is pretty much heating up. The cooling that we're providing for it is the water line that's being fed to the oil well. But because the oil well doesn't take water 100% of the time, this water ends up being stagnant and doesn't provide as much cooling as we'd want. I think for temporaries, we're actually going to provide it more radiant liquid pipes and see what this does. Because remember, the good thing is the oil well doesn't care how hot the water is. So by using all this water to provide cooling for this area in this open air petroleum generator, we're actually destroying quite a bit of heat. Well, maybe not in the net, because our wonderful petroleum generator produces 20,000 DTUs per second. Now, I know you think that's a lot, because, well, frankly it is. But remember, each coal generator was providing 9,000 DTUs per second, so we're actually doing an overall heat savings by running a petroleum generator instead of three coal generators. But because of all the carbon dioxide, we need to find another solution. Now, we have a couple of options. Our petroleum generator produces 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide. Now, this isn't too big of a deal considering we have a carbon skimmer that can eat 300 grams per second. Well, when it's running 100% of the time. Notice that our petroleum generator is not running 100% of the time. In fact, its life cycle average is only 52%, which means this carbon skimmer could keep up with it. Unfortunately, the way we have it tied into our water lines, the carbon skimmer can only run when this metal refinery is using polluted water. And it only runs once its output is gone. So at the minimum, I think we need to move the carbon skimmer. But it did get me thinking that maybe we need a mini industrial sauna and when i mean mini i mean sort of very small like perhaps this area here it would be a small dirty brick with a bunch of carbon dioxide in it separated by just a little bit of metal tiles and some water and that way we could have some steam turbines strapped to the top to keep everything on the up and up then i was like what am i going to do with all the carbon dioxide that's going to be generated in there then our beautiful printing pod gave us the answer. And there's a beautiful little Slickster larva. Hi, little buddy. Now, I have not accepted the Slickster larva out of here yet because, well, that would be introducing a whole nother set of problems. Running Slicksters inside of our dirty brick is nothing new. We could capture all the oil that they would be producing and backfeed it all to our oil refinery to create more petroleum. Unfortunately, remember, we're not using all the petroleum we're creating now. In fact, this oil well has the potential to produce three and a third kilos per second of oil. And while one petroleum generator can eat two kilos worth of petroleum per second, remember we lose 50% of our crude oil going through the oil refinery. So that brings us down from our three and a third kilos per second down to a potential of about 1.6 kilos per second. But because the petroleum generator is only running about half the time, we only need about half the petroleum or about one kilo per second. Now, if we did start running Slicksters, we could throw a second petroleum generator in there and that would pretty much solve power 
for this entire colony. But do I really have enough room to throw in a tiny dirty brick in this colony? Not to mention running slicksters behind it? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Now, I'm still in the search for our mysterious eighth dupe. Unfortunately, I don't want to touch this slickster larvae yet because I don't know if I can keep it alive. At least until we get the dirty brick up and going, because remember the livable range for a slickster is 35 to 160. And the average temp here right now is about 45 degrees, but once we start taking some of this out to make room for a dirty brick, I'm afraid that the temperature is going to drop too much. Long story short, we're just going to leave the printing pod sitting there glowing until we are ready for our slickster. By the way, in another update, look who's finally decided to start giving us plastic. Thank you, Mr. Glossy Draco. I also decided that since we're creating a dirty brick, we might as well add some geothermal power to it because I want to be able to drain all the heat from this area, or at least a lot of it, so we can get down there and capture all the beautiful diamond. Unfortunately, this is really hot. So at the minimum, we're going to have to go in through a vacuum. So it looks like I have a lot of moving of buildings and constructing of buildings ahead of me. Also, in the meantime, just to keep the dupes from being idle, we're queuing up research. So far, we've gotten about half the tree completed. We got a little bit down here and then finally into the space program. Yeah, also in an attempt to eat some carbon dioxide, we threw a few oxiferns down, but the temperature quickly got the best of it. Eventually, we'll be able to extend our cooling loop. But for right now, we wanted to concentrate our cooling loop just to get the meal lice going again. I can't believe we're about to be running slicksters on a tiny base. And you might be also wondering that if we're not gonna be running the coal generators, why do we need a sage hatch producing coal? Furthermore, if we're not using the sage hatch to produce coal, why do we need the pips to produce dirt for the sage hatch to eat? Well, that comes down to just refined carbon. We're always gonna have a requirement for coal because of refined carbon. Now, eventually, we'll be able to get to space and get some more goodies, but until that happens, we want to be as smart with our materials as possible here. I think step one for the creation of our tiny dirty brick is to move this water over, because I think this is where our geothermal spike is going to go in, and it's also going to be where we start our vacuum, which means we need to move quite a few pipes. Oh, boy. Also, while we work on this, I decided to move the carbon skimmer, and that way, you know, we don't suffocate to death. Already, our great hall was sitting in carbon dioxide, and it was slowly starting to raise further and further. This carbon skimmer here will take care of all of that. It takes its fresh water line in before the oil well even gets the water, and then the polluted water gets prioritized on the polluted water line. I also am a little sad that we're going to have to get rid of these wonderful Weezwarts. They've done a great job since the very beginning of the game keeping the metal refinery in this whole area nice and cool. The next step is going to be the rerouting of all these pipes. There's no reason that we need to have all of these coming through our industrial brick. And since I'm doing this, I probably ought to expand the oxygen system too, huh? To expand it, I only need to go over by two tiles just to get another electrolyzer in there. Yeah, let's do it. One of the issues that was occurring with the heat in this colony was just the fact that this polluted water vent was dormant. It is kind of a wonky dormancy and activity period. As an example, this vent just woke up and it doesn't go dormant again for 104 cycles. But when it does decide to go dormant, it does so for 71 cycles. So that's 71 cycles where we're losing the injection of 30 degree polluted water into the colony. So I'm in the middle of moving all the polluted water and the water pipe to where they'll completely avoid the industrial brick. And we're really, really running low on raw minerals. We have four tons worth of granite and four and a half tons worth of sedimentary rock. And that's it. Now, granted, we're going to be able to recover a lot of it that's right now going through here. But still, this is never good. And I suppose I probably could get away with using regular pipes, especially considering this area here stays pretty much 30 degrees, but we still have a lot of runs that we need to keep insulated. Otherwise, it's just going to cause our cooling loop to work even harder. So wherever it is possible, I'd like to put insulated pipes just to keep the thermals in the colony as stable as possible. But to give you an idea of how expensive it is, just this distance here is 14 tiles worth of insulated pipe. That takes five and a half tons worth of material. And that's one of the things I love playing on the mini base. It completely changes the way you play oxygen not included. And sometimes it's good to flip it up a little bit. All right, I have everything sealed up on this side. And I figured this was just an easier way to do it. 
That way we didn't get a bunch of carbon dioxide inside of our oxygen system. Now we're just going to be able to open it up, make the changes we want to change, dig out all of these tiles, sweep everything up, add another electrolyzer, and we'll be good. I suppose while we're here, we're going to add another gas pump. This might create oxalite in the future. I'm not 100% sure. But then for all the efforts I made, I realized I'm still going to get a bunch of carbon dioxide because we're full on carbon dioxide on this side as well. We'll go ahead and turn off the hydrogen flow to the hydrogen generator because just like I mentioned in the last episode, any sort of repair costs, for instance, in this case, 80 kilos worth of gold amalgam, are just gone forever. One thing you can do to prevent that is instead of repairing it, just deconstruct it when it's broken and create it again. But sometimes before you can deconstruct it, the dupes are gonna get there before you are. While I'm in here doing the pipes, there's something else I wanted to update you on. These two composts are pretty much staying 100% full. Remember, a compost can take in 100 grams of material per second. Well, our one water sieve in the colony is going to give us 200 grams of polluted dirt per second. So depending on how often this water sieve is running, in this case, 40% in the last five cycles, that'll determine how many composts you can actually use. So I don't think, unless we were planning on adding more compost, we need to be creating polluted dirt out of our outhouses. So it's not a bad idea to switch these over to a normal bathroom setup especially considering we're doing all the work right now anyways with the pipes. i am also been going around recapturing a lot of the insulated pipes that we probably didn't need. While there are some places I can't skimp on it, for instance here, because it might get above 120 degrees and we don't want that water flashing, but a run like this that is just taking oil up to the oil refinery, that doesn't need to be insulated. In the course of all the construction, I've somehow gotten a little bit of water into this area, I think it's because the water sat inside the oil well for so long because the liquid reservoir is not calling for petroleum right now so that when they finally do release the pressure from the oil well, it also releases steam. The only way to combat that is just to use more petroleum. So that way the water doesn't sit in the oil well for longer than it needs to. But until I get all that situated and we have our dirty brick up, I've just put a quick liquid filter here. It takes all the water and dumps it right over into this pool and sends all the crude oil into the oil refinery. Easy peasy. I suppose while I'm messing around with the pipes, I probably should go ahead and finish the oxygen system. Yeah. I think we're finally done and fixed with our upgraded oxygen system. The piping is a little wonky. We added one oxygen pipe. Right now it's just being combined with the primary oxygen line. No big deal. Eventually, we may separate this off into some oxalite or just another run that we need, maybe to the suits, but for right now, it works fine. The hydrogen front is where it's a little bit different than your standard system. All this hydrogen just gets eaten by this hydrogen generator. It's not controlled by a battery right now. I'm going to add a battery in a little while and probably put it on something really aggressive like a 9080 because first and foremost, we want all the hydrogen to be used. We don't want it to back up in the system. But because it took me so long to get everything set up, we have an excess of hydrogen. So right now we're just going to let it go nuts. I've also made a design change for the geothermal portion of this dirty brick. I was trimming up some abyss light and I noticed this seems to be a perfect spot. All we would need to do is add a couple of steel metal tiles there, a door here, and then some more metal tiles here. We can then have this being controlled by automation and everything else. And whenever this room needed some heat, the small geothermal stake would be more than happy to. Especially considering, well, it's directly connected to diamond. In fact, I suppose when we dig these two tiles up, we're going to have diamond. So we could make these tiles out of diamond window tiles instead. The problem is, I'm not wanting to do this the patient and correct way. Which would be to vacuum all this out, dig this out, then put everything in. I mean, that seems like a lot of work. And we're only going to be in there for a minute, right? Surely, how hot can it get in that amount of time, huh? Just to make sure we'll have everything swept up and ready. Okay, I tell you what. We're going to try to do this the right way. But chances are the dupes aren't going to let us. I'm just going to put a little bit of crude oil right here. If it holds, it holds. If it doesn't, eh, we'll do it the echo way. Well, there's our liquid lock. 340 grams of beautiful purified crude oil. I'm pretty sure if a dupe sneezes while they're sitting on this style, it would blow that liquid lock. 
But hey, we gave it our best shot. I just realized it's going to be really bad if we go ahead and grab some of this diamond and then the dupe runs past this. Hopefully there's enough crude oil in here to absorb the heat for the fraction of a second that a duplicate's sitting in here. Or maybe we just won't take anything out until we get everything built. That seems to be a much better idea. Layer one has been dug up. We're still in a vacuum. The liquid lock is still holding. Now for layer two. Layer two has been dug. Now we just got to dig out a little bit of diamond just for a second, just to see how it goes. I suppose we have to give our digger some super duper hard digging now. And poor Carol's been forgotten about. They're already up to three skill points and we haven't done anything with them yet. Carol likes digging, ranching, and suit sustainability. I figure we'll start with a little bit of ranching. Let them do that. But their primary job, I think, is going to be in construction because it'll be good to have somebody in the colony that can do demolition. We now have access to Diamond. Thank you, Jason Stewart. Oh, I suppose it'd help if we'd research window tiles, huh? Please, crude oil liquid lock. Hold while I get all the necessary research. Oh, we were only one away. Look at us. Oh, look at this. Research is complete. That would have been good to do before we started this project. Now, before we finish off this layer, I made sure to put a signal switch in here, sending out a red signal. That way the door was shut. So that way when we finish this, all the materials should be sitting on top of the window tiles and not falling down on the mechanazier lock. Ooh, I suppose I need power. And as soon as that tile is done, we're going to go ahead and pause and open up that door because we're not set up right now to deal with these 1000 degree window tiles. But we're going to have to eat some of that heat anyways. So I suppose it's time to get rid of our wonderful liquid lock. You were such a good liquid lock, Mr. 340 grams of crude oil. Just a little warm. It'll separate after a little bit. Oh yeah, it's just a little toasty. We'll eventually be able to eat that heat in a little while. Maybe after some time. Come on, it's just two diamond window tiles. How many dupes are going to be scalded? I think we're also going to try to help the issue by throwing in some temperature shift plates and then deconstructing them just to absorb a little bit of that heat. The answer is Kudwadi's going to get scalded. And Carol and Eric. Come on, this was only two diamond window tiles worth of heat. I suppose there's a bunch of hot debris here, too. Oh, yeah, look at us. We're already down to like 95 degrees and 500. We're doing great. Doing great, guys. I know what we're going to do. This could only end positively. We're just going to throw some nice fresh water down there and we'll throw enough of it to where we're not going to create a bunch of steam in our colony. We're not going to do that. Oh, Jason's looked like he's hurting. Jason, you need to go lay down. Go lay down, Jason. Here we go. Just a little bit of water. It's a little warm. And look, guys, we've made steam. Huh? Man makes fire. Dupes make steam. Everything is not doing great. But the more water we can dump in here, the quicker it should drop in temperature, right? So maybe I should have kept the liquid lock for a little bit longer. Just a little bit. It'll be fine. The window tiles are already down to 140 degrees. I mean, this is the first time Kudwadi's ever experienced rain. At least that's a good positive. All right, the worst of it's over. The diamond window tiles are now only 95 degrees. So we're going to cancel all the sweeping here and we'll let this finish cooling down on its own. Now we can get working on the rest of our tiny dirty brick. First things first is I got to bring this down a little bit. If we want to be able to put a steam turbine up here, we're going to need to be able to have insulated tiles here, a bunch of water here, and then some metal tiles here. So I'm going to put a little metal tile here just as a reminder of where we're going to. And then I think our liquid lock and suits are going to go right about here. Now, I would rather not bleed heat, which means we would probably want to do a double liquid lock. The disadvantage is a double liquid lock takes a lot more space. You know what? We might be able to incorporate the same liquid locks that are going to protect us from the rocket as we use here. So maybe the liquid lock should be here going this way. I mean, if that's the case, we could even recapture these three here. All right, give me another minute. So I suppose one problem of that potential solution is I'd put a double liquid lock here, but I would still have to end up putting a liquid lock here. Otherwise, all this heat is going to come all the way through here, which this is right now where our water pool is. So now I'm starting to think like quadruple liquid lock, like things are just getting silly around here. OK, so I'm in a bit of a dilemma. Here's the current plan. We're going to have a grooming station here. We'd have that with a normal tile, which would give us enough room for two petroleum generators sitting side by side. 
We could end and have one pump right here, but it's going to have to work off a filter because sometimes it's going to grab polluted water, sometimes it's going to grab crude oil that the slicksters are dropping. But then that leaves us a power transformer that we need for our oxygen system. Now, it would work fine here if it wasn't for these diamond window tiles. I'm pretty sure it would eventually cause this power transformer to overheat. We're also conserving a little bit of space by making room for only one steam turbine. So this is going to be a little weird as well. Holy lot of bridges we're going to have to add in order to get this steam turbine in. I'm sure I won't mess any of them up. I also just realized we'd still even need more room than that because we'd need room for a critter drop off. Then we need some incubators somewhere. This is getting to be such a thing. Suppose we don't have to have this liquid reservoir. It was just sort of convenient. By the way, it is now just a nice breezy 60 degrees here. So our duplicates can work down here without fear of being scalded to death. Forgot we also needed a kiln in here. All right, we've made a little bit of progress. We now have suits. The suits are required to go into this side of the base, which eventually is also going to have the rocket, but it enabled us to get rid of the suits here because the dupes are already in them. And by sparing ourselves from that run, we're able to recapture a lot of materials. We're also going around and recapturing all the materials from these tiles that lead to nowhere. I'm sure eventually we'll need to build on them, but right now, not that day. And how are we at zero calories again? Incidentally, we've also ran out of regolith that we were transferring through our debris chiller. So now it's time to open the doors and let more in. And those meteors would be really nice if they drop off like, I don't know, igneous rock. And this way, it's like we're going deep sea fishing with nets. We open the door, we see what kind of goodies we get. This time it looks like we got about 100 kilos worth of iron. Oh no, wait. About 2 tons worth of iron, 200 kilos worth of gold amalgam, and about 40 tons of regolith. I just found another gas pipe that did not need to be insulated. Absolutely beautiful. That's going to be a lot of recaptured sedimentary rock. For those of you wondering, right now we have zero sedimentary rock. In fact, we're down to 740 kilos worth of granite. And that's it. Okay, it's been a quick minute since we've had an update. Well, there's a few reasons for that. Because we have a few dilemmas. First, let me give you the overall tour of the dirtiest, ugliest, tiniest brick you've ever seen. We start off by getting our petroleum from the oil refinery. It passes via insulated liquid pipe all through here until it reaches the safety margin of where we already know it's going to be hot. And then we switch over to normal pipe, because quite frankly, when it comes to raw minerals, we're broke. It then feeds these two petroleum generators. Now the petroleum generators are on this smart battery set on 9060. They're going to emit polluted water and carbon dioxide. We've got the temperature in here set where that polluted water should flash pretty instantly. When it does, the steam rises to the top of the brick, where this steam turbine can grab it and put it into things that require water, such as a carbon skimmer and an oil well. Now you may have noticed that we took away our liquid reservoir. It's because we needed a place to do incubation for our slicksters. And what a better place than here, if we don't care if they end up getting some carbon dioxide and dripping down some oil. Now they shouldn't get any carbon dioxide in here, but it is at least a safer space than out here. We put the incubator out here. We're going to have to put it in its own room with its own liquid pump and grab the excess oil or petroleum from there. So it's sort of a space savings we put it in here. Now to make sure that we always had enough, we have a liquid pipe element sensor here. And it controls when this oil well turns on and off by use of a knot gate. If there is petroleum on this line, well, we have enough petroleum. Turn the oil well off. If there isn't, the oil well turns back on sends oil up to the oil refinery, which we then make more petroleum. It's still storage, it just looks a little different. Now the reason why we have this steam turbine is because regardless of how much water is being drawn off, we still need to keep the temperatures in here safe. That way the equipment doesn't have a chance of overheating past its steel threshold. Now if I had more space, and boy did I tell myself that a lot in this design, I would have done a million different things. For instance, this is only allowed to get to 130 degrees because this diamond window tile gets oil dropped on it. And when it does, we don't want this crude oil to end up flashing. So we have it set very low. So it barely gets hot enough to inject more heat in here. And that way we're still making steam, which this steam turbine will still draw out. 
Now the metal refinery setup has changed a little bit as I'm sure you can tell because the liquid reservoir is gone. Liquid reservoir is gone because quite frankly we just don't have much room for these type of niceties. Now this liquid pump if we ever does get any polluted water and the metal refinery both draw water into this liquid reservoir and as you can see it stays pretty much chock full. Now previously we were worried about the metal refinery not taking in enough polluted water and these starting to go empty. Well, now that we have both the natural gas generator giving us polluted water and the steel production is sort of normalized that we can expect pieces of steel every so often, it seems to be enough. I'm not 100% satisfied with this for a couple of reasons. For instance, this steam turbine can only run every so often because this line is all backed up. And this line's backed up because both the Carmen skimmer and the oil well just don't need as much water right now. And that's because this thermo aqua tuner doesn't need to run as much. As you can see, this cycle is ran 0% of the time. And that's because there's no more regolith or anything coming in. Now, obviously, we can change that, bring more hot regolith in, let it circle around, the thermo aqua tuner runs. We use more power, which causes the petroleum generators to turn on, which requires a greater draw of petroleum, which then requires a greater draw of the water. It's super stringy, if you know what I mean. Now, eventually, some of these problems are going to take care of themselves. For instance, you'll see that there's just a smidge of petroleum here. That's okay, because remember, petroleum actually has a higher threshold before it turns into a gas than crude oil. So it would give us more flexibility with the temperature threshold in here, which would allow us to draw more heat geothermally, making it all that much sooner before we can actually get in here and dig all this out. And the time frame that we're actually waiting for is these slicksters to morph into molten slicksters. Because remember, the longer this slickster is in above 100 degree temperatures, the chances of them laying a molten larva egg increase. Which means eventually, we'll not be running slicksters, but rather molten slicksters. Which means we'll be dropping petroleum down here, and then we'll change the liquid pump to be feeding the petroleum directly to the petroleum generators. Instead, the crude oil takes the long way over here and takes priority over the oil well. And at the minimum, it'd be really nice to get all those materials back. I've also started using a lot more mess towels around the colony. Why? Because, well, we have plenty of metal right now, and we just keep getting more. The raw minerals, we don't have a lot of those. So it sort of makes sense. And as you can see, the system is really working well. Whenever the steam does rise all the way up here, the steam turbine quickly takes it all turns it into water and away it goes now in this case because the petroleum generators haven't been running as much we don't have as much steam which means the water level is getting a little low on our oil well so what we're actually going to do is reroute this using even more insulated pipes and by doing this what we'll actually be doing is ensuring we have water to feed the carbon skimmer at all times and when necessary that water will also be used for the oil well but that is only when the steam turbine doesn't have extra exhaust water that it has to empty because in this setup here this pipe connected to the steam turbine has priority and trust me i'm an expert on bridges another great side effect of this system is all that polluted water is flashing into steam and leaving us beautiful dirt behind. I'm going to end up measuring how much dirt we're actually producing, but if it's enough, we're probably going to get rid of these pips. By the way, for those of you wondering, after we did our cleanup, we're left with about five and a half tons of sandstone, a ton and a half of granite, and almost a ton of sedimentary rock. But there's still plenty more spaces where I can grab more minerals from. For instance, I can remove this insulated tile because it's not doing anything, and I can replace all of these with mesh tiles. Next episode, I think we're going to go ahead and start using our telescope and we'll be able to install our space scanners to get a little sexier with our regolith dropper. Which means after that, it will be time to go to space. For real this time. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you're having a great time with this series. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon.